there is certain municipal exemptions where the detail falls under the jurisdiction of the towns and that legislation that was just recently passed but there is no law currently requiring that police or police officers be used on local details there are provisions as referenced by uh, the chairman of the board uh, mr. Masseri that that there are provisions in the current collective bargaining agreement that set forth certain uh, requirements on details within the town now you're saying that the police chief at his discretion can determine whether the, the uh, police are flagmen or they are not flagmen. No, it's, it's, I'm saying more generally the police chief is in charge through the town's bylaws on making certain public safety determinations. Certain details may have public safety aspects that clearly the police chief would have a say in. Well, I am very much opposed to the use of police as uh, guards for construction sites. When I first moved to uh, uh, this uh, to Massachusetts, I noticed that uh, they were used strictly on uh, streets and so forth, but now they're used on cul-de-sacs, they're used on sidewalks, uh, I think they may even be used in the middle of forest. And it's, an, it's a uh, function that they have which is way abused, very much abused, and I don't think that there is any supervision or any guidelines that have been made to uh, control the abuse of the system. So um, my uh, <coughs> purpose in uh, speaking tonight is to voice the opposition and to recommend that this article, uh, we can vote on it, but it does not change the fact that the town is free to use whomever they wish to serve, I mean, people obviously. You want them trained, you want them skilled, but they could be used uh, in, in spite of whatever recommendation the board, uh, this committee and this, these member at the town, the members of the town meeting make tonight. Is that uh, correct? In other words, this doesn't mandate the use this particular Article 11 does not mandate the use of police for these uh, construction site details. No, it provides an option. It provides an option. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Chief Nolan. Chief Nolan was seeking recognition. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'd like to explain as best I can uh, the history of this general law, of this uh, regulation that was passed by the state. Uh, the major proponent uh, was the Beacon Hill Institute, uh, a think tank in Boston. Uh, they did a study which they presented to the state legislature, uh, which stated the highest mean hourly wage for details for flaggers, I'm sorry, flaggers around the United States was $16.23 an hour. Uh, they also stated uh, that they felt very strongly that the prevailing wage law would not impact that $16.23 per hour rate. Uh, what they found in reality was uh, that in fact the prevailing wage law does impact that rate. And they've determined uh, that the rate will be set according to four or five regions across the state based upon the economy of that region. The detail rate set for this region is $37 an hour. Uh, how wrong could that austere group, the Beacon Hill Institute, be? Uh, local police departments and unions are the opponents of this particular uh, act of legislation. Uh, the reason why they're opposed to that, uh, it's done away with the time-honored tradition of collective bargaining. Uh, and for those of you sitting in this room that belong to a union or a collective bargaining association, uh, it's a wake-up call. Uh, you have to begin to realize uh, that they're beginning to chip away, the state is beginning to chip away at those rights that have been afforded through our predecessors that fought long and hard 
uh, for employee rights. Uh, and also, uh, they're fighting because collective bargaining agreements, uh, and there are a number of uh, agreements across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Locally in North Reading, we have two police unions that have in their contract language that reflects similar language to what our bylaw has that states that uh, when, uh, through, through the termination of the chief of police, uh, there is a public safety issue, a road work that amounts to a public safety issue, uh, that a detail, a police officer, is required on those sites. Uh, public works projects covered by this new law are controlled by something called the awarding authority. The awarding authority uh, could be the Commonwealth of Massachusetts or any of its political subdivisions. Uh, it could be cities and towns, or it could be commissions, unnamed commissions and boards. Uh, this has taken the authority for public safety out of the hands of the chief of police and the police department. Uh, the police departments and chief of police have the expertise, uh, they have the training and experience in managing public safety. Uh, to leave that into the hands of this unknown authority, uh, in my estimation, is placing our public in jeopardy. Well, the new law established, established that construction zone safety and alternative planning sessions have to take place. Uh, between the, uh, the authority and the local police chief or police department. Uh, to date, uh, since the law has been implemented, there have been no public safety meetings. In fact, if you watched the news last Friday on the first day of implementation, there were, for lack of better terms, confrontations in four communities in this region uh, because the state failed to live up to their own regulations as established by this particular law. Uh, another uh, problem is that the awarding authority has to appoint a representative uh, that the local police chief or police department can contact if they find that there is a problem with that particular construction zone. However, uh, historically, uh, and the best example I can give you is the Route 62 project that graced the town of North Reading for several years, uh, when we had a problem uh, requiring the state engineer to make it a determination, uh, they were uh, very difficult to find. And I would suggest to you that based upon that history and their performance to date uh, in not preparing for this uh, momentous change in, uh, in traffic safety, that when there is a problem, uh, we're going we're gonna to have a problem. And what I mean by that is um, if, for example, um, th there is a, a traffic backup on, on, a, on a state run project and it begins to impede on our feeder roads going into this particular area, uh, if it hasn't been identified in that pre-construction zone meeting, uh, then it becomes a problem and the responsibility ultimately could fall on the town of North Reading. Uh, unless we can convince the awarding authority uh, that more manpower is needed, albeit whether it be flaggers or police officers, uh, if they say no, and, and I, if I were a betting person, I would be willing to s state that they would probably say no as a cost savings measure, uh, then it's the responsibility of the local community to pick up that tab. So something that may have been born uh, by a private vendor, private contractor, now falls onto the shoulders of that local community. Another issue uh, that's not being addressed properly, uh, if um, traffic is uh, forced onto our side roads, um, or we have vehicles cutting through and, and they're speeding, uh, we have little or no control over that. Uh, we'll have to chase down that representative uh, to explain this, that, that there is a, a problem with that particular traffic site and begin the negotiation process to mitigate that. And in all likelihood, again, uh, it, it's not going to resolve that problem immediately versus having that local cop uh, that understands uh, the traffic situation within the community. They understand the potential for backups. They understand uh, the potential for delays and they can mitigate that immediately uh, versus running around trying to find that mysterious uh, representative of the awarding authority. Well, 
who are the uh, flag is replacing? Uh, they're replacing local cops who know the community needs and the nuances of that particular town. Uh, highly trained, uh, they're also replacing those cops who are highly trained public safety personnel who have the legal authority to take appropriate law enforcement action when confronted with criminal motor vehicle, pedestrian, accidents, or other miscellaneous problems. Uh, and they also have the authority to issue citations to make arrests. And I'll get back to that in, in uh, one second. Uh, local cops also are in constant communication with the uh, fire department, with their own police department uh, headquarters, uh, with the DPW, and other agencies such as the school department within the town. Uh, if we have a problem with a, with a bus route, we notify the school business office that there is a problem so they can plan to make um, alternate uh, details to, to get around those uh, uh, construction sites. Uh, local cops can act on communications. Uh, for example, uh, if we receive, if a detail officer receives a call from the police station uh, that there is an ambulance proceeding down Route 62, for example, uh, heading out to a local residence, uh, the detail, office, w detail officers will clear the way for that public safety response. Uh, that's not going to happen with a flagger. Absolutely, unequivocally, uh, their vested interest is working for that awarding authority. Uh, they have no means of communicating with the local public safety. Uh, so therefore, uh, you can expect delays uh, in ambulance service and other public safety measures. Uh, local cops who can, who can act in accordance with our local policies can shut down a detail if there's a crisis that's emerging. And I can give you some examples of what I'm talking about. Uh, back about four years ago, uh, we ran an emergency full field exercise uh, that involved the Department of Public Works, the fire department, the school department, uh, recreation department, to test our emergency response plan uh, for an incident uh, that was taking place at our local high school. And what we found uh, was that based upon uh, our manpower, our, our regular scheduled manpower during the daytime, Monday through Friday, uh, that we would not have an adequate response to handle a violent crime in the schools, such as a hostage taking uh, or a, a, an active shooter, as which happened in Columbine High School. Uh, but based upon our the presumption that on our daily average of detail officers, uh, is about, about four to five officers per day. And that's been historic for as long as I've been a police officer. Uh, that gives us a ready pool of readily available officers that are uh, completely outfitted in their equipment that can shut that detail down and respond very rapidly to supplement the on-duty staff. Uh, so we don't have to rely on, um, on our, our initial response to calling people from off-duty, uh, uh, which is about a, a, probably a 30 to 35 minute delay, uh, or our contiguous neighbors, uh, Reading, Wilmington, Stoneham, uh, Andover, Middleton, uh, which is about a 20 to 25 minute delay as they backfill their manpower, or our other mutual aid partners, which could be an hour. Uh, so that gives us that rapid response to be able to meet those obligations uh, we have uh, to our schools and to our businesses and our residents in the community. Uh, I can give you some, uh, uh, an, ex an example of where the value of a detail officer comes in. Uh, several years ago, uh, we had a frantic call from a mother who, on Elm Street by the Ipswich River who stated that her toddler had wandered away from the home and she couldn't find the, the, uh, the young child. Uh, our detail officers as well as our duty crew responded and it was the detail officer that was walking along the banks of the Ipswich River that found the child sitting on the edge, perched, almost ready to fall into the river. Uh, we also, uh, a detail officer foiled a $30,000 theft of equipment uh, from the Thompson Country Club. Uh, you may recall 14 Country Club Road. It was around the holidays uh, three years ago in which uh, there was a murder homicide. That happened right at the school release time uh, and it was, the, uh, it was our duty staff and the availability of a significant amount of officers working road details that were able to respond to that crisis. They established perimeters uh, and they stopped buses 
from driving through